Hello everybody, welcome to my necromantic guide for Blood Bowl 3, the new team with Season 5. I am going to start working my way through the uh, racial guides now, so please let me know in the comments which which further guides you'd like to see for the you know the teams in Blood Bowl 3, and uh, I may refine the process as we go, you know, like the format, um, but we'll see, you know, I'm going to start with this, I've got an idea, we'll see how this goes. So, this is my basic starting team that I would pick in pretty much every situation there's nothing I would really consider except this starting roster uh, necromantic or you know they're a powerful team but they are very limited in what they can get because they're just so expensive like as you can see there's one werewolf and two rerolls in um, in Blood Bowl 2 you used to be able to start with three rerolls and one werewolf or two werewolves and two rerolls now you now you've got to drop even one of those everything's so expensive now you know, um it really is quite a brutal start but they're still okay right they've got they've got some things going for them so we'll go through the the players in order and uh, have a look at them and stuff so here we go we've got the werewolf there he's a pretty great movement eight strength three agility three plus AV 9 plus PA 4 plus, you know, he's like a human blitzer with plus one movement, uh, but without block, <laughs> he doesn't have block, but he's got regen, you know, he's a undead team, so they don't have an apothecary, everybody has regen, except the ghouls. He's got frenzy, so it's a double-edged sword, right? This is why I only like ever I only ever liked starting with one werewolf in Blood Bowl 2. Um, the frenzy is like a drawback as much as it is a boon a lot of the time. And claws is the interaction between claws and mighty blow has been nerfed in the new rules, so there's less motivation to get mighty blow for him on a double um, or a secondary as it would be now. Um, so it's interesting. He's still a powerful player. He's still fast. Frenzy claws are both decent, but you know not that great. He's got general agility on primaries, so the two that you're looking for are block and dodge as soon as possible. They are the bread and butter of a werewolf. I tend to prefer sidestep as his third normal skill rather than tackle. Some people like to go tackle. I feel like with Frenzy you have the poor man's tackle. Also, especially on Blood Bowl 3 ladder, you don't really care too much about tackle. So just get block, dodge and sidestep. And then you've got all, you know, funky funky sideline plays with sidestep. That's, that is very cool. Block, dodge, sidestep. And after that, honestly, just stats. So what I would actually go is I would actually go block and dodge, choose those skills and then roll on stats and try and get plus strength, plus agility. And if you fail at either of those, take plus movement or plus AV or trade it down for sidestep so that at least you're giving yourself maximum chance to get plus strength or plus agility because my perfect werewolf would have plus strength and plus agility. It might even have two plus strengths, honestly. Um, <laughs> werewolves are pretty good with stats, really good with stats. You know, one of the best players in the game with stats because they do need block and dodge, but after that, they need stats more than anything. That's what really makes them amazing players. Um, because, you know, you're all in. Like, your whole team is the werewolves, basically. You've got some support. You've got a supporting cast. But what makes the team is how amazing the werewolves are. They're where most of your speed comes from. Like you, They're a weird team because they've got a lot of slow players and then a few fast players. And, uh, yeah, so the fleshies, these haven't changed from Blood Bowl 2. They're, you know, thick skull, stand firm, regen. They're basically like a black orc in from Blood Bowl 2. Um, the good thing, I guess, with splitting uh, black orcs and biggins in the new rules is at least it makes flesh gomes look a bit more unique. But they actually can't pass anymore. <laughs> but, you know, they're the same stat line as they used to have, same skills as they used to have. It's really nice. Stand firm is really nice. Lets you uh, lets you blitz with your werewolves into flesh golems and don't push them and stuff. So that's really good. And also just like sideline control in general. Thick skull is great to have an 115k player. Like very expensive for like this is the problem, right? Like the old uh, black orcs were 80k, and now you're paying 35k for a skill that doesn't have too much effect with regen. It does later, but early it doesn't have a lot. Thick Skull doesn't have a lot. It's nice when it triggers, like, you know, saving you a player for the drive, but it's not It's not high-impact skill. And Stand Firm can be high-impact, but again, on a rookie, you're losing value. As you gain skills, which your first skill should be Block, Chosen, I would say, and then Guard, Chosen, um, then, then he's great, right? With Block and Guard, he's an incredible, incredible player. Now you're getting a lot of value off these three extra skills. But as a rookie, you're losing value with them, basically. 
Um, and then his third skill is Mighty Blow, and then he's finished. And then, and then you know, if, if you made it after that, you could give him plus AV, you could give him dodge, you could give him defensive, you could give him tackle, you know, all the normal, all the usual skills after that, but the bread and butter is Block Guard and Mighty Blow. Now the big change from Blood Bowl 2 is the Wraith. Uh, gone are just Undead Whites. They are now Necromantic Wraiths. They are a unique player. They have a, they have a pay of zero. The, the other stats are the same, 6, 3, 3 plus, 9 plus, but they have no hands now which is huge, means it's really, really incredibly hard to skill them. Uh, one of the differences between Blood Bowl 3 and Tabletop is, if somebody concedes on Tabletop, you should be able to allocate touchdowns to your team, um, X amount of touchdowns. You, there's, a, there's a thing to work out. You don't get that with these. You, you don't get to allocate them touchdowns from victories, which is very sad. That's not in Blood Bowl 3, so it's, it's actually incredibly hard to skill them. You just have to rely on, you know, casualties and MVPs. Um, but they've got block and regen still, and now they have, for only 5k, they've got foul appearance and sidestep, which is an incredible, incredible skills to have. Like sidestep, everyone knows how great sidestep is, but especially, you know, when you get guard. Basically, you're looking to get guard as your only skill on these guys, and then you've got block guard sidestep you know people can't deal with them they don't want to hit them even if they try to hit them you might foul appearance them they are incredible incredible players but the problem is getting the spps on them because you just cannot funnel them touchdowns and also like when you're playing the game it's it's you know sometimes limiting right even if you weren't scoring on your uh white you wanted to at least have the threat of a handoff and now that threat is gone and, and it makes it a lot easier to defend you know like uh we saw we saw some plays in Super League, you know, people handing off to biguns and, you know, using biguns as, as scoring threats and stuff like this. You know, and any player can do something except rates. They just, you know, the no hands is, is actually a really really big, uh, really big um, handicap for them. But guard is really all they need, and, and they they can take mighty blow and stuff after that. But but the big one is guard. They do they do have general and strength. They don't have agility. If, they could, if you could take dodge on them on normals, that would be incredible too. But you do need to use a secondary for dodge. It's something to think about, especially as of course you want block and dodge on your werewolves, and you already start with dodge on your ghouls. There were people in Blood Bowl too who didn't take ghouls on necromantic, which I always thought was crazy. And now, especially with wraiths replacing whites. It's even crazier, right? Because you just don't. That's that's you know move an agility three ball handle that you've lost in in whites going uh, turning into wraiths. But you know they're the same as they used to be seven three three plus. The passing's got a bit worse. A V eight plus dodge no regen. So these guys do get killed quite a lot. Um, but that's okay. They're expendable players more so in necromantic than undead because in Ted of course you've got four ghouls, but you you need them to to handle the ball essentially. Whereas uh, werewolves can take that over, take over that role for necromantic. So I would actually just random ghouls, almost exclusively random ghouls, random general on them. Blocks great, wrestles great, tackles fine. Strip ball isn't the worst. Sure hands is is pretty decent. Dirty players great because then you can then you can take sneaky git on them. Frenzy's a bit rubbish when you've got uh, when you've got werewolves. Fend isn't the worst, you know. Like and it, so, so the, the marginal skills you can then random again to try and like you know kick isn't terrible. And then you random again and you've got a wrestle kick guy for twenty TV. That's pretty nice. So yeah, I, I I would tend to random generals for these guys. If you random agility skills, you you really only hit so sneaky getting sidestep and defensive, but defensive not so much. So it's a bit. It's a bit iffy to random agility, so I'd always random general unless I might just I might just go straight to dirty player sneaky. Well, maybe go straight to sneaky git and then dirty player. That is definitely an option. But um, I think particularly in Blood Bowl three with the seventeen hundred cap, I would want to go randoms, and then if I get a dirty player, good. Um, linemen have remained the same. 4-3, four, 4+, four plus, AV9+, plus, can't pass at all now. Regen, so you know, they're pretty useless players, but they're cheap and they're hard to, de hard to kill because they've got regen. Um, these guys just want a random general again. They, they, you know, they can just get, if you get block for 10k, brilliant. Wrestle for 10k, brilliant. 
tackle, you run them again, right? Um, pro, you run them again. Kick, you run them again. <laughs> Dirty player, 10k, great. So you're really looking for wrestle block and dirty play for 10k and everything else you can just sack them um you really don't want to pay 20k for skills on these guys and you know if you get like a block lineman for for 50k then you can take av on them uh, the the thing with the thing with completed players what what you need what you need for blood bowl 3 and uh, blood bowl 2020 in general is you need an idea of a completed player and then once your player is complete you then just take AV on them because AV for 10k, it's loads of SPPs and it's 10k TV. It's just a great deal all around. You haven't in mind your target. Once you hit your target, just stack AV to, for survivability because everybody fouls. Everybody's got Mighty Blow. Not many people have got Claw. Uh, funnily enough, obviously, werewolves do. Um, so, yeah, so th this is my starting roster. A look at the players there. And I made a couple of other teams as well. So. Let's start with again Blood Bowl three related. This is what I'd be looking at building to the seventeen, the new seventeen hundred cap. So I haven't had any re rolls at all, um, it, because seventy k re rolls are just very expensive, very very expensive re rolls. All their positionals are very expensive. I don't want to add another re roll and, and forego development. So they're going to be a little bit dodgy with only two re rolls. That that's unfortunately the nature of the beast. Um, you know, they could sack a player here. You don't need 13 players, but if you can go quite foully. Also, this team is without any randoms, and I would definitely be hitting randoms on the ghouls and the zombie. So that would be at least, uh, you know, at least 20k less than this. Uh, so yeah, here the wraiths, as you can see, I've taken AV on one because, you know, maybe he got too many SPPs. Um, <laughs> wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be on purpose, but guard, for me, guard, they're finished. And then I'm taking AV if I if I accrue too many star player points and have to spend them. The flesh golems, I'd just go block guard mighty blow. This funny enough, this werewolf after saying I would take sidestep over tackle, I just thought let let's put in a tackle here. You know, it's something you can do. I would personally still go sidestep, but I could see somebody doing it. And then here, look, block sure hand sidestep, like something, some kind of carrier, right? This is probably too many skills on the ghoul, honestly, especially for full price, but you know. Just giving you an idea. And then this is the sort of thing I'd do. I'd get a werewolf, plus strength, plus add. Well, I'd give him block dodge first, and then I'd start rolling stats. The first one that isn't strength or agility, I'm taking sidestep. The second one that isn't strength or agility, I'm taking AV. And then hopefully I'm getting strength and uh, strength or agility, or you know, double strength or whatever. Um, and you know, you just make you just build the whole team around an absolute superstar wolf, I think is is the play in general and you know if it was redraft you would just redraft this guy and you wouldn't really care too much about the other players <laughs> um though funnily enough actually raids are a prime a prime redrafting target right because of uh how hard it is to skill them but you know a player like this is just going to win games single-handedly um a very very significant amount of the time and the third team that I created here was a Euro Bowl team. So, you know, we've got the Blood Bowl Super League on Blood Bowl 3, which is using Euro Bowl rules. So this is what I would do with Necromantic. Unfortunately, they, they're a little bit short. Everyone told me how fantastic Necromantic were in the Euro Bowl rule set. But they've got to give up either, you know, a re-roll or a ghoul. Like, there's no way you could go 11 players. But, I mean, that's, that's a bit, bit too spicy for me. Um, so yeah, this is what I would do. Only one ghoul. But as you can see, guard. The, the the benefit of resurrection is sticking sticking guard on the race. That's incredible. And I would I feel like you have to go guard in the fleshies because they're lacking so much strength. You know, they're, this team is mostly strength three. Um, it's not really a heavy bash team, so I would go guard on the on the fleshies personally. Uh, one block wolf, one wrestle wolf. I did win blitz pit with a. Uh, with necromantic just just quietly similar kind of thing this isn't i don't think this is such a good package for them honestly uh a blodge ghoul and a dirty player zombie so and i think but i do i like the three reels honestly for for naf style um i really value it you you could you could drop that re-roll and take a ghoul runner instead but mm, and you know and you could you could give it blodge as well right rather than the thing but I just feel like two rerolls just doesn't let you get stuff done, you know. Like, you, you, if especially on tabletop, you have to win games, and I feel like being able to chuck dice at things 
is very, very, very good. But you know, of course, a ghoul is much, much better than a zombie lineman, so it's uh, it's a hard, it's a, it's actually a tough call. Also, an option would be to um, choose the package where you can drop a skill to gain more cash, and then you could turn this zombie into a ghoul. And a ghoul, even without a skill, is arguably better than a zombie lineman with dirty player, isn't it? So that's another thought as well. Yeah, to give up a skill for a rookie ghoul. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. So um, what I'll be doing is I will be. You can see that from the name of this necromantic over explained. I'll play these games. I'll try to explain you know my thought process and everything. I, I guess I'll try and do that for every team that I do the guides for as well. Uh, in time, I'm not I'm not that big a fan of playing Blood Bowl three to be honest. But I'll I'll try and do like you know at least a short run with every race uh, when I do the guides and stuff, and then hopefully you know there'll be some. Will be some how to play the teams in that, as it were. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll flesh this out. Maybe maybe I'll think of different things to add. You know, in future ones like oh, I guess which stars to take. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't add Wilhelm Cheney. They added uh, Gretchen Vachter, who's absolutely terrible, and Skrull Halfheight, who's absolutely terrible. <laughs> and uh, you've got the two chainsaws, which are chainsaws, and in my opinion, are terrible. So the only star player you've got is. Uh, Ivan the Animal Death Shroud, who's actually a pretty great star player, so that's not too bad. He's actually lost a bit of value in the current rules because Break Tackle is worse, right? So he's, he's, his Break Tackle is a lot worse. He he is worse than he used to be, um, but he's, he's still a pretty decent star. And apart from that, you know, it's just like bribes, wizards, whatever. Um, right, so anyway, hopefully that's good anyway. I'll, I'll put this out there and hopefully we get some feedback and I'll try and make better videos in future for the other ones. May, may revisit this. But uh, at least we've got something. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.